In these problems, we are looking at some of the business applications of calculus. In this first one, it says that in marketing a certain item, a business has found that the demand for the item is represented by the function a little p equals 55 over the square root of x. Another way to think about this, this is called the demand function. This is also the price that you're going to charge, and x represents the number of units that you're making. So this demand function, what it says is based on the number of units that are out there, this is what people are willing to pay. So that's how you set your price. So that's our demand function. And then it says the cost of producing X items is given by this function. So that's here's your fixed cost and here's what it costs for materials or manufacturing for each individual item. And then find the price per unit, per unit that gives the maximum profit. So we're going to maximize a profit function. Maximizing a function is not too hard. We take the derivative, uh, we find the maximum uh, by you know, finding the zeros of that uh, derivative. Uh, but what is the profit function? Well, if we call profit function big P of x, the profit that you get represents what you, um, you earn, so let's call that revenue, minus what you had to pay to, to make this stuff. And that's a cost function, so let's call that C of x. We've got C already. We just need the revenue. Well, what's the revenue going to be? Well, the revenue is the price you charge times the number of things that you sell. And we've already said that x is the number of units you sell. This function is the price that you charge per unit. So if you multiply this times x, you're going to get your revenue function. So our revenue will be 55 over the square root of x times x. And if we simplify here, um, we can change that to 55 times the square root of x. So there is our revenue function. So let's set up our profit function now. So profit is 55 times the square root of x, that's our revenue, minus this whole thing. So that's minus 0.4x plus 700. And I'll just uh, bring the minus sign through here. Now we've got our profit function. We want to find the maximum here. So we're going to take the derivative and uh, then find uh, the zeros for the derivative and examine those. So the derivative here, p prime of x, this will be, let's see, this is x to the 1 half, so this is going to be 55 over 2 times x to the negative 1 half. I'm going to write it like this. And then this simply becomes 0 0.04, and the 700 disappears. So there is our derivative, and if we want to solve, um, we'll set this to 0 and solve for x. And to solve for x here, I'm going to add 0.4 to each side. And let's see, a little flipping things around here. We're going to get the square root of x equals 55 over 0 0.8. I just multiplied the 0 0.2 here and then multiplied by the square root of x and then divided by the 0 0.8. And let's see, we're going to get the square root of x equals 68.75. And if you want to go ahead and solve all the way for x, you just square that. But this is not going to be our answer. X is not going to be our answer. Remember, what we wanted um, was to find the price per unit, not the number of units. And that's what we're solving for here. X is the number of units. The price per unit is this original demand function. And you'll notice it's got the square root of X down on the bottom. So I'm not even going to bother squaring that uh, square root of X. I'm just going to plug it back in to the demand function. That's going to give us our price per unit. So the demand function, P, equals 55 over the square root of x, which is 68.75. And that is 0.8. So it looks like the uh, best uh, price here when we're maximizing profit is going to be 80 cents. All right, let's take a look at one more. So this one says that a manufacturer knows that the profit from selling X units of a certain item is given by this function. So here's our profit function. We don't have to figure it out. 
It's 0 0.0003 times x cubed plus 9x. And we want to find the marginal profit for a production level of 81 units. That's the first part. And then find the actual gain in profit by increasing production from 81 to 82 units. So the marginal profit, what it should tell you is the, the profit from uh, producing one more unit. And we get that, we get an approximation for that by taking the derivative of this function. So the marginal profit function is the derivative of the profit function. So let's go ahead and, and find p prime here. Shouldn't be too hard. 3 times 0 0.0003 should be 0 0.0009 x squared plus 9. So this is our marginal profit function and we want to find that for a production level of 81 units. That's what x represents. So we just plug in 81 for x squared or for x. So to find p prime of 81, and I'm going to let you do all the math on that. It should come out to 14.9049. So that's our estimate of the profit um, we would get from increasing from 81 up to 82 units by taking the, the marginal profit function. We could also test this exactly, and that's what they want us to do in the second part of this problem, find the actual gain in profit by increasing production from 81 to 82. And what you would do there is find p of 82, this function, and p of 81 and subtract. It should be pretty close to this because the marginal profit function is a, a really good approximation of doing this amount of work. But let's, let's see how close it is. So p of 82 minus p of 81, and we're using this profit function up here. So let's see, p of 82 will be 0, 0, 003 and um, times 82 cubed plus 9 times 82 minus 0 0.0003 times 81 cubed plus 9 times 81. So that's, that's the math we have to do here. That's p of 82 minus p of 81. And let's see, we should get 14.98, something close to that. You'll definitely want to punch this through on your calculator and double check, make sure I did the math right. But if you look at this, we got 14.90 versus 14.98. That's a pretty good approximation of what the actual uh, profit is for producing that one more item. So those are a couple of examples of how we can use calculus and the derivative in some business applications. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can check us out at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.